Have you recently birthed a 10 pound baby? Are you tore up from the floor up? Same. Fear not, today we're going to talk about all the things you can do to help ease the pain after tearing from childbirth, including how to handle that dreaded first bowel movement. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I just had my second baby about three and a half weeks ago. I usually try to find the happy medium between crunchy granola life and medical intervention, but let me start off by saying for my labial laceration, I did not try anything super crunchy. I felt like I needed everything modern medicine had to offer. There are natural remedies out there like herbal sitz baths. So if that's something you can look into. Um, and definitely if any moms have found that helpful, drop a comment so you can help other moms out. Really quick, I just wanna go over the different types of tears that can happen during childbirth, just so everyone knows what I'm talking about when I use certain words. All right, so to start, we have labia majora, clitoris, labia minora, urethral opening where you pee, vaginal opening where your baby comes out. This general area down here, this patch of skin is called the perineum. Some people say perineum, but it's perineum. And then but beneath that patch of skin, you got a little butthole. Most commonly when someone has a tear during childbirth, it's gonna be a perineal laceration. So meaning that they tore down from their vagina in this area between the vaginal opening and the rectum. Those tears can also extend back into the vagina or higher up, you can have vaginal sidewall tears. You can also have labial lacerations where sometimes the skin will split on either the labia minora or the labia majora, or like what happened with me, my labia minora just split right in half and the tear extended back into my vaginal sidewall. You can also have periclitoral or periurethral lacerations where you have small tears up by the clitoris or urethra. So first and foremost, the number one thing you should do is stay on top of your ibuprofen. In the first several days postpartum, I was taking 800 milligrams, so four regular ibuprofen every six hours, four times a day. I know that sounds like a lot, but that is a safe amount to take. Ibuprofen not only helps decrease the amount of pain that you have, but it can help decrease the amount of swelling. So if you had a labial laceration like me, or you pushed for a long time, the swelling can be pretty significant. I did not ask for any stronger pain medication, though you certainly can, but know that anything stronger is going to be a narcotic. And I personally just didn't feel like it was worth the risk when I'm already sleep deprived and having to care for a newborn. Narcotics will also make you constipated. So if you have stitches near your rectum or you have hemorrhoids from giving birth, that's the last thing you're gonna want. Number two on my list is padsicles. I made a few for my first birth and I didn't end up using them because I didn't tear. And so I almost didn't make any this time. And I feel like maybe my midwife jinxed me because she was like, oh, you didn't tear last time. Odds are really low that you'll tear this time. Yeah, odds were also really low that I'd have a baby three pounds bigger than my last baby, but what can you do? Anyways, I'm so glad that I made some. I think I made about three. And when I was on my last one, I made several more. These are cooling pads that you can make for yourself by putting witch hazel and aloe vera on a pad and then sticking it in the freezer. I found them really helpful for like the first five to six days postpartum. And that's around the time that my swelling went down. After my swelling went down, the pad wasn't really on my labia minora, so then it wasn't helpful. But if you have a perineal laceration, you may find them helpful for much longer. And I don't remember if I said this, but most women are gonna have perineal lacerations just because that's where the most stress gets put on the vulva during pushing because most women deliver pushing on their backs. Because I pushed my baby out in hands and knees, there was more stress on the upper part of my vulva and that's why I had a labial laceration towards the top. Next on my list are tux pads. You can use these in lieu of or in addition to padsicles. They are just thin cotton pads soaked in witch hazel and I've said it before, but I think the store brand is just as good as the name brand. Walmart sells a pack of 200. I don't remember how much these were, but I know the 100 pack that I bought previously uh, was less than $5. So if you have a perineal laceration, you can use them to pat yourself or kind of wipe with after going to the bathroom. You can also just line your pad with them. If you have a labial laceration, you can either wipe with them, also pat yourself with them after going to the bathroom, or even kind of wrap it around your labia like a taco shell, a taco for your taco. Number four on my list is lidocaine spray. A lot of hospitals will hand out Dermaplast, which is benzocaine spray, so similar numbing spray with menthol in it though. And I can tell you from personal experience, menthol on your vaginal mucosa just burns. I got a canister after I gave birth to my daughter. I used it one time and then threw it away because it felt terrible. I like this one that's lidocaine um, from Asper Cream Better. I'll drop an affiliate link in the description because it's just lidocaine. It does sting for about 10 seconds after you spray it on, but then significant pain relief. 
I'm three and a half weeks postpartum now and I'm still using this daily. About a week after you give birth, the discomfort will shift from pain to itching, which is normal. It means things are healing, but it can also be really annoying. Since you don't want to scratch that area, the best thing you can do is hang on to your peri bottle. If you gave birth in the hospital, they probably gave you one. My midwife had me order one with my home birth supplies. Forcefully rinsing yourself off with some warm water after you go to the bathroom is the closest you're going to get to being able to scratch that itch. But also, if you're just itchy and you don't need to go to the bathroom, just go rinse yourself off again. It's not going to hurt anything. If you have significant itching that's just getting worse and worse, you may want to touch base with your OBGYN or your midwife because it is possible to get a yeast infection postpartum, especially if you had IV antibiotics because you had a C-section, any major surgery, or because you had group beta strep. As far as your first bowel movement goes, grab a washcloth, get it wet with warm water, and then fold it and press it against your vulva to apply counter pressure while you have your bowel movement. You can also spray yourself with a numbing spray before your bowel movement. If you have periurethral or periclitoral tears, you may also want to spray yourself with a numbing spray before you urinate. I also always warn my patients whenever they have periurethral tears, and I tell them to rinse with the peri bottle while they're urinating to cut the acidity of their urine. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much to everyone who watched the circumcision video. If you missed it, I'll link it here. I was a little bit nervous about posting it, but I was really encouraged by all the positive comments that that video got. In the coming weeks, I'll post my home birth video and talk about ways to address breastfeeding challenges. So if you think that might be interesting to you, make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. If there's other postpartum topics that you wanna hear the medium crunchy perspective on, make sure to drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.